In this video, we're going to be talking about how to use Newton's method to estimate the root of a function. And remember that the root of a function is the point at which the graph of the function crosses the x-axis. So we're looking for the root of the function in a certain interval, and we're going to approximate the root to a certain number of decimal places. So normally, we would just use calculus to solve for the exact value of a root. But sometimes, depending on the function, that can be difficult to do. And in that case, using Newton's method to estimate the value of the root can come in handy. So in this particular problem, we've been given the function f of x is equal to x squared minus 5. We've been asked to look for a root inside the interval x equals 2 to x equals 3. And we're going to be using Newton's method to estimate it. So this formula right here, this equation, is the Newton's method formula. And it's x sub n plus 1 is equal to x sub n minus f of x sub n divided by f prime, or the derivative of f, f prime of x sub n. And this whole formula looks more complicated than it actually is. The first thing we need to do is pick a value x sub 0. So we're going to go ahead and write out a value here, x sub 0. And this is difficult for a lot of people to choose, because how do you know what value to start your approximation with? Well, if you're given an interval, like we are, we're given the interval 2 to 3, you could choose one of the endpoints of the interval, or you could choose something in the middle of the interval. Like, for example, we could pick 2.5 because that's halfway between 2 and 3, the endpoints of the interval. Sometimes you're not given an interval, and in that case, what you might want to do is see if you can try to graph the function and get an estimate of where the root might be and then use a value close to that. Or if you can't graph it, if you don't have an idea of where the root is, if you can't solve algebraically for something close close to the root, then what you can always do is just pick the value x equals 0 and go from there. In this case, because we have the interval 2 to 3, like I said, we'll go ahead and pick halfway between 2 and 3, which will be 2 and a half or 5 halves. So we'll go ahead and say 5 halves. So we can think of this as our initial value or our starting value, x sub 0, x 0, is 5 halves. So what that means then is that we're starting with the value n equals 0, because we always start with the value x sub n. And because we always start with x sub 0, that means n has to be equal to 0. So x sub n is going to be equal to x sub 0, which is going to be equal to 5 halves. So our goal is to use successive approximations. Because we started with x sub 0, our next step is going to be find x sub 1, then x sub 2, then x sub 3, etc. So in order to find our next approximation, x sub 1, we're going to have to use this formula here. So we're finding x sub 1. We always have to use the previous value. So notice here on the left-hand side of the formula, we're finding x sub n plus 1. And in order to find that, we use x sub n. So we're going to say x sub 1 is equal to x sub n, which we know is 5 halves, so 5 halves, and then minus here we have f of x sub n. In other words, whatever we get when we plug 5 halves into the original function. So plugging 5 halves into the original function, we get 5 halves squared, which is going to be 25 fourths. So 25 over 4 minus 5. That minus 5 comes from our original function. Then in the denominator, we have f prime of x sub n. So keep in mind that the derivative of our original function is going to be f prime of x is equal to 2x. Because when we take the derivative of this right hand side, the derivative of x squared is 2x, the derivative of negative 5 is 0, so we just get 2x plus 0, or 2x for the derivative. So f prime of x sub n is whatever we get when we plug 5 halves into f prime of x. So 5 halves times 2 is just going to give us 5, so we end up with 5 here in the denominator. So if we do the math here, we want to get a common denominator in our numerator. So we can multiply this negative 5 by 4 over 4. And instead of minus 5, we'll get minus 20 over 4, which is the same thing. So then we have 25 minus 20 all over 4. That's going to give us 5 over 4. So this whole numerator will become 5 over 4. Then when we divide that by 5, it's like multiplying this by 1 fifth and our fives cancel and we're left with 1 fourth. So we have here 5 halves minus 1 fourth. If we multiply this first fraction by 2 over 2, we end up with 10 over 4 and we get 10 minus 1 is 9, so we end up with 9 fourths. So remember x sub 0 was 5 halves, x sub 1 is 9 fourths. Now we want to go ahead and use that value to find x sub 2. So we'll say x sub 2 is going to be equal to and again, plugging into this formula, remember we always use the previous value for x sub n. So 9 fourths goes in here for x sub n, 9 fourths, minus f of x sub n. So whatever we get when we plug 9 fourths into the original function. 
So 9 fourths squared is going to be 81 over 16, and then we have our minus 5 from the original function, divided by whatever we get when we plug 9 fourths into the derivative. So 2 times 9 fourths gives us 18 fourths, and now we just need to simplify. So we want a common denominator here, so we're going to multiply this negative 5 by 16 over 16. So what we're going to end up with is 80 over 16 here, and then 81 minus 80 is 1, so this whole thing becomes 1 over 16. Dividing by 18 fourths is the same thing as multiplying by 4 over 18. Well, we can get this 4 to cancel with the 16, so the 4 becomes a 1, and the 16 becomes a 4. And so then we end up with 9 fourths minus 1 over 4 times 18, which is 72, so 1 over 72. To get a common denominator here, we have to multiply this first fraction by 18 over 18. 4 times 18 gives us 72. 9 times 18 gives us 162. So what we end up with then is 162 minus 1, 161 over 72. So this gives you an idea of how Newton's method works. You're always using the previous value to come up with your next approximation. And what you should see is that these successive values, x sub 0, x sub 1, x sub 2, are getting closer and closer to a certain value inside the interval here, 2 and 3. The easiest way to look at this is in decimals. So if we start with 5 halves in a decimal, that's 2 and a half, so 2.5. 9 divided by 4 is 2 and 1 fourth, which we can call 2.25. And 161 divided by 72, if we do that with our calculator, is 2.2361, where the 1 is repeating. So you can see that we have these decimal values. Keep in mind that in the problem, we were asked to use Newton's method to estimate the root to four decimal places. So we needed to get at least to four decimal places. And the important thing here, since we're estimating to four decimal places, is to get to two approximations in a row that produce the same four decimal places. In other words, to get to a stable set of four decimal places. Because once those four decimal places are stable, and you know that they're not going to change, then you can give an accurate estimation to those four decimal places. So so because we didn't get the four decimal places to be the same between x sub 1 and x sub 2, we have to go to the next approximation to see if we can get 2, 3, 6, 1 as our first four decimal places so we can call it stable and give that as our answer. So for x sub 3, we're going to be using the value 161 over 72, plugging that in here for x sub n. So we're going to have 161 over 72 minus f of x sub n, or minus f of 161 over 72. So we plug this value into our function, f of x, and what we're going to end up with is 161 over 72 quantity squared minus 5, which comes from the original function, divided by whatever we get when we plug 161 over 72 into the derivative. So the derivative here is 2x, so we're going to get 2 times 161 over 72. Well, that 2 will reduce the 72 in the denominator to 36, so we can think about that as 161 over 36. Now, if we do this with our calculator, what we see is that we get a value 2.23606. Now, you might say these first four decimal places are different than what we had in the last approximation. In this approximation, we had 2361. Now, we have 2360, so we have to keep going. But in fact, the decimal place after the 0 here is a 6, which means that it's going to round this 0 up to a 1, and we're stable then at 2.23. 2361. So then what we can say is that the root of this function, or the point at which this function crosses the x-axis on the interval 2 to 3, is approximately at the value x equals 2.2361. And because we got 2361, two approximations in a row, we're stable to four decimal places, which is what we were asked for, and that's how you use Newton's method to estimate a function's root.